Hey everyone, Joey here, aka Animus, and today we're doing part 3 of my craft book marathon. Now you may have noticed the lighting is extremely different and I am dressed differently. Well, there was a massive series of events after part 2 um, that uh, I will not go into great detail on, but tons of things happened, trying to... Um, transfer it to the computer, loads of different things we had to do, updates that took place and everything, I got really stressed out, I couldn't send it to the computer because, you know, I know loads of people use iPhones, so this might be a bit annoying to some people, but iPhones, like, they're so, I find them so much harder to use than Android phones, because, whereas Android phones, you just plug into the computer and you can instantly file transfer, iPhones are like, oh, here's iTunes, update iTunes, download from the iCloud, all that weird stuff. So it was quite hard. I, I couldn't really get them onto the computer. I'll do that at some point, but I've decided I'm going to do two a day. I'm not gonna, I was originally going to do them all in one day, and that was going to be insane. So I'm going to do two a day. I did Craftwork and Craftwork 2, yet... Yeah, Yesterday and today I'm going to be doing Ralph and Florian and uh, <laughs> Speaking in German. Okay, let's just do German. Ralph and Florian und Autobahn. Ja, yeah. um, heute. Ja, yeah. um, so What I'm now going to be doing is filming on my phone onto an SD card Which I can then just easily put into the computer all that boring boring stuff yada yada so um this footage may not look quite as good because my phone's camera isn't that great. In fact, I'm actually using a fil slight light filter that makes the colours look a little bit, you know, more vivid. Oh god, there's a train going past. Just, just try and ignore those, okay? Um, yeah. So without further ado, let's get into Ralph and Florian. Um, last two projects were not what I expected. First one was actually pretty great. Second one was a little bit boring and probably made, made for a pretty boring video, so let's see what we get with this one. First track, Electricious Roulette. Oh god, there we go. Okay. Fun little arpeggios there. Already very different sounds the first two, although to be honest I'm not sure anything else is going to sound like those first two. Very electronic now. Oh, whoops. Oh god, it stopped. Okay, hang on, hang on, I'll cut in a moment, I'll cut back. Okay, there we go, it's back again. Sorry about that. Wow. I think they probably decided that at this point that they were going to be proper, properly electronic band. Sounds less like rock music. Oh no, that's a guitar, sorry. <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. Is that a guitar? I can never tell what these instruments are sometimes. Because they sound so unusual. Yeah, it does. It does still sound a little bit like the first two. It's a, it's a lot brighter and more melodic, though. This is nice. Yes, it's, it's really nice and bright sounding, and it moves it so far much more fast paced, like 
the Crawford too got into some seriously, seriously long passages. This is already more engaging. Yeah, it's got quite a simple, you know, bright melody, but then there's still a lot of weirdness going on in the background. Ticking clock. It's a cool noise. Oh, great percussion. We speeding up again? <laughs> Lots of speed ups in their music. It's really fun. Quite easy to listen to, particularly compared to the first two. Yes. This is nice. Very mood setting. I can imagine this cheering me up quite a lot, listening to it. Slowing. Wonder what that sound is. Yeah, that was a really nice opener. I really liked that so far. Oh god, it stops again! Um... Okay, uh, this track, Tonga Birga. That's how you say it. Yeah, I think... Wow, that flute playing is good. It's a very spacey sounding synthesizer as well, and there's really good delay. Wow. <laughs> so I... I was reading, I just read something about the track listing, just read the track listing and um, apparently this track is called, uh, the name means Mountain of Sound and I can very much hear that. It is a mountain of sound. I just love all that, that fluttering flute and synthesizer. So Really, really immersive. Very ambient, very, very relaxing. I hope this isn't going to be another record that, um, well, the, the repetitivity isn't, like, getting on my nerves like it did on Kraftwerk 2, uh, but I'm still slightly worried that this is going to be one that's not going to give me as much to say to the camera. It might be quite an ambient album. This really doesn't sound like it was made in the 70s, honestly. made like 2010s <laughs> honestly <sighs> it's 
sound design is amazing, even though it's really simplistic. That was a great track. Honestly, um, okay. iPhones are a bit weird, so when I... When I go off, it, it pauses, so that's really annoying, but, um, anyway. Next track is called... Yeah, I have to come off the video to look at the track listing. So and then it stops playing. It doesn't do that on Android. Annoying. Anyway, next track, Cristallo. Okay, very icy synthesizer. Nice pulse there. <laughs> really nice bass synthesizer. I love that kind of sound. Yeah, this is starting to more resemble the kind of stuff that I've heard from them, like the little snippets of their later material, that kind of robotic sound. Yeah, I, I cannot, I cannot get enough of that bass synthesizer in, in the right channel. They got great stereo so far. Yeah, they're building these amazing soundscapes out of just like two or three sounds. It's amazing. I'm getting ever so slight um, Jean-Michel Jarre Oxygen vibes. I haven't checked the date when this came out, but I don't know if it was before or after 1976. Probably before, I don't know. I'll check in a moment. Very um, improvisational sounding as well. Like they're just messing around with the gear, but... Gosh, I can imagine how influential this bit this must be. It reminds me so much of stuff that's made so much further in the future from this. I just feel their influence. There's a very bright atmosphere carrying throughout this album, so far. Yeah, not giving me as quite as much to say, but I'm not getting bored, bored of it like I did at points on Crop Up 2 repetitive in a much more ambient way and it's still cha ever changing. I've got to add this to my ambient playlist. This would be great. This has, has such a, like a, a big cavernous icy feel to it. So spacious. I think it's like the, the reverb settings they're using and delay. Wow. I can imagine there's probably one of them at synthesizer on the left channel and one of them on the, the bass on the right channel. You can imagine just messing around and stuff. But most people messing around on synthesizers doesn't, doesn't sound this good.
yeah, that was a great atmosphere that that thing created. Okay, sorry, gotta stop it to check the track listing because Apple phones. Uh, next track, Heimat Klanger. Oh no, sorry, I don't think the last track's finished yet. <laughs> Keep thinking that, they often fade out and fade in again. I guess this is just the same thing but reversed. Wait, hang on. Is this the same thing, right? Yeah, definitely. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Next movement. These tracks always take me by surprise. I think they're finished and then they come back with another movement. Yeah, so some tracks on Craftwork and Craftwork 2 were completely non-electronic, and this is completely electronic. This reminds me of like um, classical minimalism, sort of repetitivity, but ever-changingness of it. That was great. Okay. Now, high map Klanger. Next track. Piano, nice. Not like not what I was expecting. By the way, guys, if you notice my new vinyl clock in the background, I'm pleased with it. It's an old deco record. <laughs> expecting piano. Is that a horn instrument coming in? Can't tell if it's a horn instrument in the background or a synthesizer. By the way, this is really nice sounding. so far have been in the major key. Don't think we've really heard any major keys on that, particularly on the first album. Yeah, this is, this is like basically not repeating anything. It's, it has a really classical feel to it. Like th a lot of these tracks are structured like classical music. A lot of classical music, I mean, not all classical music, because of course it's different. It's not all the same. It's just really nice and immersive, honestly. I'm just lie back to this. But I'm filming a reaction video, so I can't. Can I? Now that. No, maybe they are real instruments. That. I'm pretty 
pretty sure that is that thing coming in now. the end or is it coming back no that's the end okay uh now that yeah that was a really nice little little ambient moment um next track dance music that means dance music i guess maybe this will be pretty sure that's the same synthesizer that was on um what was it called um the mountain of sound one whatever the german name was yeah, definitely Jean-Michel Jarre feel with the drum machines and stuff. And the bass. Yeah, this is more dancey than the other ones, so that's ambient. Oh, nice little that's definitely real percussion yeah, in the left stereo channel. Yeah, the, the stere use of stereo is really nice because there's lots of stuff going on on either side, but it's not completely panned like you get on, say, a Beatles track. Because I don't really like stuff being like that. Oh, there's some really nice little bell chiming instruments. It's really sweet. It's less... It's so... It, I know I said at some point that some musical themes were ever so slightly similar to the first two, but this is completely miles apart from the debut. would be some of these tracks would be great as background music or something that's not a, that's not a negative thing at all it's just quite an ambient album although not completely ambient just you know chilled out Ugh. Clapping. Yeah, I need to stop saying real because, of course, no one in the 70s would have gone, wow, that's a real instrument. In fact, they probably would have gone, wow, that's an electronic instrument. Although, obviously, electronic music had been happening, but Kraftwerk were probably some of the very, very first people for people to, you know, truly, really recognize. Tons of people will call them like the the fathers of electronic music almost in a way. They're probably the first proper big famous electronic act, even though there were ones before. Yeah, this definitely gives me big again minimalism vibes like um what's his name? Yeah, like Steve Reich or John Adams. Am I thinking of the right person? It's John Adams, someone else. John, definitely, yeah, John Adams. I was <laughs> hoping I wasn't getting mixed up with John Williams. Of course, John Williams, film composer, and not, not a min minimalist. Anyway, this music. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going off on tangents. It's hard to talk about ambient stuff. <laughs> Like, you can't really call this ambient, can you? It's got a beat and everything, but you know what I mean. There's so much, so much going on, all these claps and things. It's just, it's just 
really great music, honestly. I really admire them for this. like electronic minimalism. Can't tell if those are vocals or not. Yeah, I think they are vocals, they've just got all this reverb and stuff on them. So much going on! I think this might be, this might be my favourite track so far. up to this point has been great on this album. Don't know if I like it more than the debut so far, but we'll see. Because that album was <laughs> great in a very different way. getting dull or repetitive at any point despite the same arrangements going on for a, quite a while there's all this it's constant constant change and things going on absolutely everywhere but it's still chilled out and relaxing Glockenspiel or something, yeah. That was, yeah, that was an amazing track. Okay, what's our final one? Okay, Ananas Symphony. Pineapple Symphony. What a name for a track. Well, this is gonna be big. It's gonna be a 14 minute track. Oh, it's an auto harp. I'm pretty sure that's an auto harp. I've got one of those. Very old one. Yes, yeah, I think that that sounds like an auto harp to me. Ring. Okay, we're getting like a shuffly beat coming in. Is that a... Saying the title in like a edited It's like the first like lead vocals we've heard on a craft book track. Some weird vocal effect. Can't tell if that's the same auto harp or maybe there's like guitar coming in. Really nice stabs, like the fading in. Maybe it's gonna go for like a tropical sound, hence pineapple, pineapple sim. Still, what, what a great title that is, pineapple symphony. Nice phase effect. Okay guys, sorry about that. I am not I'm not sure what just happened, but um like it said the SD card was full. All of a sudden it just stopped recording and then um apparently that video took up three gigabytes and I'm thinking, how does that work? How did it take up three gigabytes? That is massive, but anyway. I've just switched to internal storage now, so I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, so, okay, let's just carry on.
No, why is it starting from the beginning? There we go, okay. Still very, everything's just very mellow on this, honestly. Atmospheric, still, it's just so warm. Yeah, that's definitely a guitar. Well, I think it was an auto harp at the beginning. I think just. What's that called a that kind of key changes? They call it like a truck driver's gear change key change, <laughs> where it just rises up. Everything just rises up. There we go. Do it again. It has a very old and warm feel. It a very sort of vintage feel to it. I'm not sure if that's deliberate or if it's just its age, but I like it. I guess this does sound quite tropical, I guess. I'm not sure. It's not outwardly, you know, tropical sounding, but it does sound very, quite little bit beachy, like lounging on the beach. Pineapple symphony. I'm only think of that because, I don't know, I thought it might be trying to go for some tropical island with pineapples <laughs> feel. Maybe just as, just a title, you know. This track has, because of its very long run time, I have a feeling it's it's just going to be a section of it and it's going to go on to do lots of other things, maybe. So I'm excited about that. Oh, it's swooshing everywhere. <laughs> I can't, I can't not do sibilance when I say swooshing. <laughs> I just have to say it like that. Maybe it's supposed to be like ocean waves, maybe. atmosphere honestly this entire record there's that phaser again I think maybe that yeah that that sound might just be a little bit too loud, the... Maybe... I don't know. Slightly too much of a swoosh in the foreground of it, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's deliberate, I don't know. No idea. Okay, maybe we're gonna move on to something else now. Yep. Honestly, like from a sort of 
structural, general atmosphere standpoint, like the, the general atmosphere of this album is like practically the polar opposite of the debut. Even if some sounds are fairly similar, it's they've yeah. I, I imagine this is probably where Kraftwerk starts to really become Kraftwerk. really get into their electronic sound, I guess. Although this is pretty, pretty, you know, rock sounding at the moment. There is like that high pitched synth synthesizer. My phone doesn't run out of space on internal storage because I know it's quite low, but it should be okay. Whenever. Might have to transfer it to the computer before I listen to Alto Bar. Sorry, I'm <laughs> talking about other things again. There's not enough, really, all that much to say constantly about this, but I'm just soaking up the vibes and the atmosphere of the Pineapple Symphony. It's very slowly evolving, but it doesn't feel static like Moments on Craft Up 2 did. It feels like we're just slowly moving to new places. Two as well, but that one slight, slightly more similar to this because it had some more ambient sounding passages. But they're evolving, they're evolving, I can tell. there were computers around but there weren't computers for music really I don't think so they probably would have just been playing on their synthesizers and guitars and stuff which means they just they can just play around and constantly have stuff you know changing instead of just looping which I guess is one of the great things about old music it's kind of sad that um, things have become so you know how it's all completely perfectly Loops these days instead of people actually playing stuff, you know, multiple times, little variations. You 
can just completely copy and paste and copy and paste and that means that so much modern music sounds so much more sterile than stuff like this did back in the 70s or, you know, early music, earlier music. And that's one of the, I guess the great, one of the main great things about very early electronic music. That they weren't actually just looping things, they were playing it on real instruments, even if they were electronic. Vibes like um, orbitals attached at the end of civilization. Yeah, I think it's the just the little shuffling beat and the repetition and stuff. Although that track went on a lot more, it felt like it went on a lot more than this does at the moment. to hold me in that moment, in that place, unlike so much stuff on the previous record we listened to. Which just didn't grip me enough to justify its run time. And... That's a wrap. That album... The album was great. It's definitely, definitely better than Craftwork 2. I, I probably put it on roughly the same level as Craftwork 1. I know not many, I don't think that many people were very much into Craftwork. Oof, I ran out of phone storage again. <laughs> I'm just holding the camera here while it charges. Um, yes, I know my hair is terrible today. I just need to get my very final thoughts because it interrupted me just before I was about to finish saying. Yes, that album was like near, a near flawless ambient album. It, it was very, very brief feeling, sort of zipped in, zipped out. Um, it was, it sounded, it sounded really ahead of its time, and I could hear how it was probably really influential on music later on. And it was extremely tight, great sound design. Maybe, um, possibly the final track didn't entirely justify its run time run time but it did help to get immersed in the atmosphere so yeah that was great i think i think it deserves another eight out of ten that that was a yeah really near flawless it, it was really tight um had a lot of fun listening to that and it had a great atmosphere so ralph and florian gets an eight out of ten Oh, actually, I just looked at the time. I realised. I think I might have to leave it at that for today. I'll probably listen to Outer Barn tomorrow. Okay. Anyway, thanks for watching.